Good morning. I'm in Galatians. When in the course of human events it becomes necessary for one people to dissolve the political bonds which connect them with another. Do those words mean anything to you? It's the Declaration of Independence, the very beginning of it. It's, um, it's important for us to remember, it's Im re important for us to remind ourselves I too was watching videos yesterday. Uh, one of the videos I watched, a guy was going out and he was um, interviewing people. And keep in mind that you can edit videos and to make it look the worst and only grab the bad. But these these people that were interviewing um, in their comment, they said that we were just so so surprised and so disheartened by the enormity of people that don't know what we're celebrating tomorrow. You know, um, the founding fathers being Jesse Ventura and, you know, all these people and just, you know, um, I even asked, uh, <laughs> I'm putting you on the spot, I even asked Jordan this morning, what year was it signed? Um, 19 something? <laughs> you know, it, it's important. You know, this nation's slipping away, and I'm not poking fun at you. It's, it's, it, it's what's being taught. It's, it's, you know, we need to make sure. And, and you know what? His not knowing is a fault on my part. We need to make sure what's being taught. We need to make sure of what's being said in our house. Um, the people came from Europe. They came from England, a religious oppression, and they came to be free, to freely, to freely have a religion that wasn't under the per political persecution, and and then it, then that 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 monarchy came over here with them, and and so they they made a declaration. Uh, the founding fathers, fifty-five men, came up with this declaration to 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 declare that they're going to separate themselves from this political bondage. It's an amazing thing that happened. It's part of our history. It's part of our freedom that we celebrate tomorrow. It's bigger than just a day off from work. It's bigger than these fireworks. It's a celebration of the freedom that this nation has. We come to this church to celebrate a freedom that we have. A greater freedom, Amen. And that, that's what Paul is reminding us. This whole chapter five, and I, I'd really read the whole thing, <laughs> but, but um, time constraints. Five thirteen, Galatians five thirteen. You, my brothers, were called to be free. But do not use your freedom to indulge in the sinful nature. Rather, serve one another in love. The entire law is summed up in a single command. Love your neighbor as yourself. If you keep on biting and devouring each other, watch out or you will be destroyed by each other. I, I implore you to read this whole chapter and just, just to sit down and read it because I'm going to skip through it because of time, but... Okay. <laughs> So I say, 16, so I say, live by the Spirit, for you will not gratify the desires of the, and, and you will not gratify the desires of the sinful nature. For the sinful nature desires what is contrary to the Spirit, and the Spirit what is contrary to the sinful nature. They are in conflict with each other, so that you do not do what you want. You know, that's so much of our lives. We, we want it. We all have the desire. I know so many people that have a desire. I think everyone has a desire. Everyone has a desire planted in them, but just overcoming that sinful nature. How do you overcome it? You can't do it yourself. It's in Christ. Christ gave us that freedom. And when we look to Him, when we seek Him, when we spend time with Him, we can overcome that sinful nature. But if you are... But if you are led by the Spirit, you are not under the law. 
the acts of the sinful nature are obvious. There's some, there's some big, bold stuff in here, but mixed in are some little, subtle things that we're all bound by, and we need to see these. The acts of the sinful nature are obvious. Sexual immorality, impurity, and debauchery, idolatry and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, that's a big one, dissensions, factions, and envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you as I did before as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of heaven. But the fruit of the Spirit is love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, goodness, faithfulness, gentleness, and self-control. Against such things there is no law. Those who belong to Christ Jesus have crucified the sinful nature with its, possess with its passions and desires. Since we live by the Spirit, let us keep in step with the Spirit, and let us not become conceited, provoking and envying each other. Now I'm going to jump back. Um, Five one for it, it is for freedom that Christ has set us free. Stand firm, then, and do not let yourselves be burdened again by the yoke of slavery. That slavery is is sin. That slavery is all, all the things that religion will put upon you. We Christ died to set us free. We need to remind ourselves of that freedom that He's given us. Step back into the simple truths. Don't make it so complex that people can't grasp what you're saying. Do you know why you come here? Do you know why you come here? It's because we have a freedom in Christ. Albert Einstein said, I had to write this one down. <laughs> Unless you can explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. It's that simple. If you got to make it so complex and you don't understand it, it's simple. Jesus Christ died to pay the price for our sins. And he, and he overcame it. He overcame that death to show us that He did. To show us that sin has been conquered. And that if we accept what He did for, him, for us and believe in Him, that we will not perish. We need to repent and turn from those things and turn to Him. That's the freedom we have. It's the freedom. Christ died to give us freedom. God, God sent Him so that we can be reunited with Him and free from all this stuff. Remind ourselves of these things. Remind ourselves of these simple truths. Why are we here? Why do we come here? So we feel better about ourselves for our own selfish ambitions? No. It's to praise God. Praise God for the wonderful things He's done for us. So a table, this table is reminding us of the trust that we have in Him, where we put our faith, where our freedom lies. That's what this is about. That's what this life is about. Unless you can explain it to a six-year-old, you don't understand it yourself. Father, we just we thank you, Father. We thank you for this freedom that we have, Lord, this freedom that you've given us, Lord. We thank you for the freedom that this nation has, Lord, but, but bigger than that, we thank you for the freedom we ourselves have because of Jesus Christ who died to give us that freedom and rose from the dead that we might be saved. We thank you, Father. We thank you for that freedom we have, Lord. Help us to seek you. Help us to look to you, Lord. Help us to spend that time with you, Lord, that we can overcome all those desires, that we can overcome that battle that is within us, Lord, that we can overcome and be free. Freedom is found in you. Where the Spirit of the Lord there is, there is freedom, and the freedom lives within us. Lord, help us to look to you. Help us to seek you. Help us to grasp that, that which you died for. We just thank you, Father. We thank you for all the things you give us, Lord. And that we thank you for the opportunity to give back. To give back that, that 
that gives us a freedom, a freedom from the bonds of this world, that we can let go of the things of this life that burden us, ensnare us, Lord, and we can just freely let go and give to you, Lord, to give you our heart, Lord. Just thank you for this opportunity to give, Lord. Bless the giver. Bless those who cannot give, Lord. It's the heart you're after. Lord, bless these offerings and multiply them to further your kingdom. Let them be a sweet fragrance to you, Lord. In Jesus' name, amen.